Colorado is one of the most tail prone states in the country. Data from the Federal Emergency Management Agency place it between first and fourth in the nation, depending on the metric you use. So today, let's do an experiment on how hail forms. There are a few key things we need for this experiment to work. First, we need to make an ice bath in a large tub, a bag of ice, cold tap water, and salt. You'll need a food thermometer to measure the temperature of the ice bath, and finally, you'll want a tray of some kind. The key to this experiment is the concept of supercooling. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's not how things actually work in the sky. Water actually remains liquid well below freezing because it doesn't have anything to cling on to, like a dust particle, or in our case, an ice crystal or a piece of grapple. So we end up with a mix of ice crystals and water droplets and thunderstorm clouds. So I've got my bucket here of water ice, and I'm going to pour in enough salt to drop the temperature to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 10 degrees Celsius. I'm going to stir that up. And now I'm going to take my bottle of distilled water, and I'm going to put it into this mixture. And I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes. OK, it's been 20 minutes. Carefully take out the bottle and unscrew the lid. and pour that water onto the ice chip and watch it freeze onto that surface. And you've got a hailstone. In a thunderstorm cloud, supercooled water droplets crash into ice crystals or snow pellets and do the same thing. Stronger thunderstorms will fling this hail back up into the cloud where another layer of water gets added to the hail and eventually this hail gets too heavy to be held up and it falls from the cloud. Higher altitudes are colder. So we're closer to the freezing level in the atmosphere, which makes it easier for hail to form. It also gives the hail less time to melt as it falls out of the cloud. The best part of this experiment, no insurance claim needed. See you next time.